In this video, I'll cover transition-based dependency parsing. I'll provide an overview of transition-based dependency parsing, and then more specifically focus on shift-reduced parsing methods. I'll cover the ARC standard approach in particular, and work through a case example to show what it looks like in action. Finally, I'll talk a bit about how data can be used to facilitate this process. Transition-based parsing is a classic approach to dependency parsing that iteratively makes decisions about which transitions or dependency relations to select next based on the goal of generating a valid dependency parse. Stack-based shift-reduced parsing is generally employed for doing this. In shift-reduced parsing, input tokens are gradually shifted onto a stack, and at a given time point, the top two elements of the stack are matched against the set of all possible relations. When a match is found, that relation is created between the matched elements, the dependent is popped from the stack, and a relation is added to the set of relations identified so far. The end goal is to have a single final parse at the end of things that accounts for all of the words in the input. Shift-reduced parsers generally have a set of transition operators that help facilitate this process, and each of these operators helps by interacting with the stack, the input buffer of words, and the set of possible relations to produce new configurations. An initial configuration in a transition-based parser will have the stack containing only the root node, so this is basically the node that would represent the root of the sentence, an input buffer with all of the words from the sentence listed in order, and then an empty set of relations indicating that there hasn't been any parsing completed yet. The final goal configuration will have an empty stack, so every word has been matched, an empty word list, so there aren't any words left to parse, and then a set of relations representing the parts. Throughout all of this, the operators in the transition-based parser will focus on just a couple tasks. They'll assign the current word, so the word that has currently been read by the input buffer, as the head of some other word that's already been seen, or they'll assign some other word that's already been seen as the head of the current word, or they'll just do nothing at all with the current word and move on to the next word in the input. More formally, in a shift-reduced parser, and specifically in a shift-reduced parsing method called the arc standard approach, these operators are referred to as left arc, right arc, and shift. Left arc looks at the word at the top of the stack and the word directly beneath it, and decides that the second word is a dependent of the word at the top of the stack. It assigns a relation between the two and pops the second word from the stack. This operator can't be applied if the root is the second element in the stack because the root node should be the only thing remaining on the stack at the very end of the parse. Right arc looks at the same two words and decides that the top word is a dependent of the second word on the stack. It assigns a relation between the two and pops the first word from the stack. Shift just removes a word from the front of the input buffer and pushes it onto the stack. Some important things to note about this process are that these operators are only concerned with the top of the stack, so anything can be going on down below the top two words. Um, and once an element has been assigned its head, it is removed from the stack, so this means it can't be available for later processing. The ARC standard approach is really simple um, while also being reasonably effective, making it a nice approach for transition-based dependency parsing. Here's the formal algorithm for the ARC standard approach. Reiterating again, it's really, really simple. You initialize it with a stack containing just the root, an input buffer containing the list of words in order, and an empty set of dependency relations. Then, looping through until you reach your final state, you decide which transition operator to apply, and then apply that operator, at which point you've created your next state. You'll know you've reached your final state when all of the words in the input buffer have been pushed onto the stack, and the root node is the only element remaining on the stack. Although we've looked at a lot of examples of dynamic programming in this course, the ARC standard approach is actually not an example of dynamic programming. Um, it's actually a greedy algorithm where an oracle says, here's your operator given the current state, 
The parser applies that operator, not stopping to explore any other options or perform backtracking, and then a single parse is returned at the end. We can see how the ARC standard approach works to understand this process in more concrete terms. So let's say we start out with the input buffer for a short, simple sentence where we're saying, book me the morning flight. We're in our initial state right now, so the only thing on the stack is the root and no dependency relations have been asserted yet. We need to decide what operator to apply. So we know that our options are left arc, right arc, and shift. We think back to the rules associated with those operators, and we remember that left arc and right arc both require that there are two elements on the stack. That isn't the case right now, so we have to perform a shift operation. We'll go ahead and shift the word book from the input buffer to the stack. So now we have two things on the stack. We still don't have any relations, and our input buffer has shrunk a little bit to just having me the morning flight. The oracle needs to decide which operator to apply next. We recall that you can't apply left arc if the second word on the stack is the root, so that option's out. Um, but it looks like we could apply either right arc or shift. The oracle needs to choose between these two options based on its available knowledge, and I'll talk a bit more about what that means pretty soon. But for now, let's say that it decides from among right arc and shift to perform another shift operation. So now we have three items on the stack, and the input buffer has shrunk a little bit more to just contain the words, the morning flight. At this point, all three operators would be valid moves. We have three items on the stack, and neither of the top two items are the root element. It's up to the oracle to decide which of those three operators would be best, and in our case, let's say it goes ahead and selects right arc. Remember, right arc means that you're adding a relation between the top two words in the stack, where the top word is a dependent of the second word. When we apply a right arc, we go ahead and pop the top word from the stack, and then we add our newly created dependency relation to our set of dependency relations. So now we're back to having the same three words in the input buffer and two elements in the stack. This means we're once again in a position where we can't apply left arc, but we could do either right arc or shift. The oracle considers the information available to it and decides to perform another shift operation. We'll shift the word the from the input buffer to the stack. So now there are only two words left in our input buffer. Our stack once again has three elements on it with the top two elements being non-root elements. So any of the three operators can be applied. The oracle will decide to go ahead and perform another shift operation. So we'll shift morning from the input buffer to the stack. We have one word left in the input buffer now, and we have four elements on the stack. This means that any operators can still be applied. The oracle decides to perform yet another shift operation. So we shift the final word flight from the input buffer to the stack. At this point, our input buffer is empty, so we can't do the shift operation anymore. However, we could apply a left arc or right arc operation. Given the available information, the oracle decides that a left arc would be best. We perform a left arc, so remember that means we create a dependency relation between the top two words in the stack, where the top word is the head and the second word is the dependent. Since the second word is the dependent, we pop the second word from the stack, and then we add our new dependency relation to our set of dependency relations. We still have four items on the stack, so we're not done yet. The oracle can once again choose between a left arc and right arc. It selects another left arc, so this time we'll create a dependency relation between flight and the, pop the from the stack since it was the dependent, and add the new dependency relation to the set of dependency relations. The oracle can still choose between a left arc and right arc, and let's say that this time it selects a right arc. This means that we'll create a dependency relation between flight and book, where flight is the dependent and book is the head. We'll pop flight from the stack since it's the dependent, and add our new dependency to the set of dependency relations. Now we have just two elements on the stack, and one of them is the root. Our input buffer is also still empty, 
This means we can't perform a shift operation and we can't perform a left arc since the second element is the root. So the oracle will by default decide to apply a right arc operation. This means that we'll create a dependency relation between book and the root element, where book is the dependent and the root element is the head. We'll pop the word book and add our new relation to the set of dependency relations. At this point, we have an empty input buffer, and the stack only has the root on it. This means we've reached a final state. So we now have a complete dependency parse of our input. Now, in the case example we just saw, a few things were simplified. For example, we assume that our oracle was correct 100% of the time. That's not necessarily always the case, um, and that's actually one of the flaws of shift-reduced parsing. Since the algorithm can't perform any backtracking, incorrect choices along the way can lead to incorrect parses. There were also many cases in the example where the oracle could have selected from multiple valid options. These alternate sequences may have also led to equally valid parses. So although the shift-reduce algorithm will provide you with one valid parse, that parse might just be one out of many possibilities. We also saw that in the case example, we were adding dependencies to the set of dependency relations, but we weren't assigning labels to them like we saw from the universal dependencies tag set. If we want the ARC standard model that we just saw to assign specific dependency labels, then we need to parameterize left ARC and right ARC with those labels. This of course complicates the Oracle's job because all of a sudden there are many more possible operations that it could choose to apply. In terms of its decision-making process, the oracle generally chooses what to do next using supervised machine learning. Given a training set with different states or configurations labeled with the correct transition operators, it will extract features specified by the system designer and learn which decisions to make in different circumstances to produce ideal outcomes. A variety of different types of machine learning models might be used as oracles. In the past, some of the most common models used were logistic regression and support vector machines. Recently, neural networks have also been used for this task with success.